Bobby Evans going deep, way down the left side, way down. Well, hello, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video, and welcome to the gridiron. And after the Giants signed Zach Fulton yesterday from the uh, Texans, just want to give my little state of the offensive line address, I guess, my thoughts on um, the signing, also maybe pushing me, um, I guess, more and more in the direction of, I certainly hope, in the first or maybe second round of the, uh, the draft, the uh, Giants grab an interior offensive lineman. <sighs> well, what, you got so I guess one side you got Hernandez. I guess on the other side you got Fulton and Lemieux. I guess maybe battle it out for who's starting. After you let Zeitler go, your most, I guess, dependable offensive lineman, you just, you, you took a step back. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, you had Gates at center. Gates seems like he could probably pretty much play anywhere. Thank goodness we got that guy out of Nebraska. Thank goodness. Seems like he, he can almost plug and play him anywhere. I'm not saying he's going to be an all-pro or a Hall of Fame or whatever. Looks like we can put him anywhere we want, and he'll do a decent job for us. So he's doing decent at center right now. You got Andrew Thomas, okay? So we got Gates, and we got, I, I think we got two. Now can uh, Rob Sale and Pat Flaherty, can they work their magic with Will Hernandez? I mean, we drafted a number 34 overall. Pretty much almost a first-round choice, and he was a guard. You'd think you'd get a little, you know, a little better production out of him. I mean, not that he's been extremely horrible, but you were kind of hoping a, a little more from him. So maybe Rob Sale and Pat Flaherty can work the magic. I mean, they can make him a little bit better. Because don't forget, you know, this is a make or break year for him. We're going to sign him. We're going to re-sign him. Which also brings you back to, you know, maybe this draft and possibly next draft. You might need to, you know, get... Possibly two interior linemen if you're not going to keep Hernandez. Are we going to be able to afford Hernandez? If Hernandez has a great year, you know, I, there's no way he's going to want to go get the like, 13, 14, 15 million dollars, you know, for an elite guard. He, that's not happening. Maybe eight, maybe 10, maybe, you know, I'm just throwing numbers out there. I'm just off the top of my head, but he's not going to get an elite guard. But if he has a decent year, are we going to be able to afford to pay him eight to 10 million? You know, might have to let him go. May not be able to afford him. Um, does he stink, you know, I don't say stink up the joint, but does he not do, you know, up to expectations? Might just have to let him go because he, he's not holding up at his end of the bargain. So once again, we might need, you know, two interior alignment. We might need a third. We might need a, a tackle. This is, uh, you know, going to be a... a, a, a Important year for Parrot. You got Solder, not going to have him forever. Um, not that you'd want him forever, but, you know, I mean, Parrot, I mean, is, is, can, is he going to be a capable? I'm not looking for a Hall of Fame or All Pro. No, I mean, capable right tackle. Um, or is he going to be a, a perennial backup? You know, so you look at that. So we might need three guys in the next couple drafts on the offensive line. We're starting to fill holes around, so we are able to possibly either maybe bring in a free agent or sign a couple guys in the draft. Um, but, you know, it's an important year. Now, <clears throat> um, um, with, the op with the coaches, Rob Sale, very, very... Very excited um, <clears throat> that we got him. Colombo came because of Garrett. If Garrett wasn't here, Colombo would be here. Because Colombo has no ties to Joe Judge, so he wouldn't be here. I mean, you, you got to appreciate you know the effort Colombo gave. Uh, yeah, he had some success with the Cowboys, but look at the talent. I mean, 
You know, Fredrickson, Zach Martin, they drafted him in the first round. <laughs> Tyrone Smith drafted him in the first round. I mean, you know, you put a bunch of number one draft choices across the front of offensive line, yeah, you might be pretty good, you know. What can you do with the third rounder, a fourth rounder, a fifth rounder, Lemieux? What can you do, you know? I saw Lemieux as a good run blocker last year, but he was kind of like a turnstile when it came to pass blocking, which also leads me back to Fulton. Last year, I believe he gave up 11 sacks. I think the year before that, he only gave up one. But, you know, are you going to feel comfortable with Lemieux? And, <clears throat> you know, but off this out, back to Columbus. So I'm kind of in a way glad he's gone to Googe or Gugliano, however you pronounce his last name. Um, I know he's, he's a very, very respected coach. He gets results and all. But in a way, I'm kind of glad he's gone because if you look back at his track record, I don't know, past, I don't know, what, seven, eight, nine, ten years, you just look at it. He was here for one year. He was here for one year. He was here for one year. He, I mean, <clears throat> you bring him in, are you ever going to be excited about him? You look at his past track record, he, he stays in places for one year. So, I mean, you bring him in, you know, and do, do you see him building something long term? No. Do you see him being there for a year and being gone? Yeah. He was here for whatever, four, five, six games last year, and now he's gone. Not that he was a bad coach, but <clears throat> his track record. You can look at some coaches with their track record. You know, once Bill Parcells left the Giants, you look at his track record. He was with the Patriots, what, three, four years. He was with the Jets for, I believe, three years. He was with the Cowboys for three or four, you know what I mean? It just shut, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, the track record. And only there for so long. So hopefully with Rob Sale, I mean, slash Pat Flaherty, Pat Flaherty was here from 2004 to 2015 as our offensive line coach. Now, Pat Flaherty started to get up there in age, so, I mean, don't expect him for the next 11 or 12 years. But he stayed here for a while. He has a, Pat Flaherty has ex extensive coaching. I mean, he, he started off, I think, he, I don't remember the name of the high school. I think he started off as a high school coach, and then I think he had six different stops in the college and just before he came into pro, he's pretty much like that. Pat Flyer, he's a tight end coach. He came in in 2000 with the Redskins as a tight end coach. North Turner got canned in the 2000 season, so they canned him, they canned Pat, Pat Flaherty. Pat Flaherty went to the Bears, I believe, from 2001 to 2003 as their tight end coach. The Giants must have saw something, um, got, brought him in. That's like 2004, 2015 as our offensive line coach. And as you know, those are some of our glory days. You know, we have some glory periods. 2004, not so much to 15, to 14, to 13 and all, but, you know, 2004 to 2011, 2000, you know, some good years there. Wow, so we won a couple Super Bowls. So you've got to be very, very happy for him being here. Rob Sale. Um... Very excited for him. You know, first time in the pros, but he, well, once again with him, his tie, Pat Flyer doesn't, you know, has ties with the Giants. Um, not so much with Joe Judge. Rob Sale has ties with Joe Judge. Rob Sale, I believe, was with Alabama from 2007 to 2011, while Joe Judge was at Alabama from 2009 to 2011. So Joe Judge has that connection. And while he was with, you know, Rob Sale, he's, he saw something in him. And it, it, it rolled into when he was with the, those raging Cajuns. You got to give him a lot of credit. Uh, he did the best with what he had. Now, the Sun Belt Conference, okay, which the raging Cajuns are from, is not the football, college football capital of the world, okay? But he did the best with what he had. Now, 2020, when he was there, is was you know with the, the virus and all, um, so it was a little bit of a um, you know odd oddball season. But if you go back to the season before that, when they had a full schedule, they played 14 games. When he was there, <clears throat> they set team records. They had like and it was like over 6,900 yards of offense. They had like 42 rushing touchdowns. 27 passing touchdowns, 
69 total touchdowns on the offense. Um, you know, he did the best with what he had. One of the games, I guess, it was a Texas Southern or something. They were they were they were beating them 56 to six at halftime. They beat them like 77 to six, I think it was. They had like 750 yards of off. You know, so you know, and, you know, I I, I understand that the you know the quality of the opponent isn't there, but <clears throat> I'm just going to show you. You know, if, if, if your team's not good, you're not putting up those type of, you know, stats. So he, he got the best out of what he could. He also, as I said, you know, if you're a, a wonderful, fantastic, five-star, four-star prospect, you're going to Alabama, you're going to Notre Dame, you're going to Ohio State, you're going to Georgia, you know what I mean? You're going to Clemson. You're going there, all right? He sent two guys into the pros. Um, Kevin Dotson, I believe, was drafted 135th overall by the Steelers, but he was like a, um, he was like an All-American. Then they had uh, another one of his, play, Robert Hunt, was drafted, I believe, early second round by the Dolphins. So, I mean... He did the best with what he had, and he, he made, you know, kind of like what he had, he, he got the best out of him. I mean, he sent two guys into the pros. One guy was an All-American. One, one guy was drafted in the second round. Offensive lineman from the Raging Cajuns? Seriously? Wow. Pretty impressive. So I'm very, very excited, um, especially if Joe Judge knows him. Joe Judge, you know. You know, Joe Judge not going to bring anybody in here. You know, somebody he believes can get the job done. So I'm pretty excited. So can we just get <clears throat> Matt Parrott to up it a little bit? Can we get Will Hernandez to up it a little bit? And if you can get Nick Gates, right, to get a little bit better. All right. Now we're talking to get Andrew Thomas to get a little bit better. All right. You know, I mean, with Burton and, and Lemieux at, at the other guard, I mean, mm, I don't, you know, back up, you know, maybe quality. You know, I don't want the quality back up. Back up, okay, but are they ever going to be, you know, mm, you know? Unless in this draft, I mean, I've seen some play, places, the, the giant draft in Creed Humphrey from uh, Oklahoma as a center. That dude's a stud. He was injured last year, but that dude's a stud. And if we can get him, put him at center, slide Gates on over to, to guard, then we'd have Thomas, Hernandez, Humphrey, Gates, maybe Parrot. You know, I um, so if, if if we could do something like that, draft the center, slide Gates over, or just keep Gates at center and draft the guard. You can't draft a tackle. If you're going to draft a tackle, it's just strictly for, for, for backup. you got to give Parrot a, ch a chance, you know. And um, I, I don't know if they're going to give Lemieux a chance. I mean, a full season. But I, I'm, I'm just thinking that they somewhere along the line, they got to early, sec first, second, third round, got to bring an interior offensive lineman in through the draft. Because we got... Um, a couple, a couple of guys. I looked off of the. Uh, now let me just know if any of these guys are scary either. We got um, this Kenny Wiggins. I looked off the the, the roster. I believe he's from Fresno State. Um, Kyle Murphy from Rhode Island. Does that does that scare you? And uh, I know another was Jackson Barton. I believe from Utah. Does does, does, does that scare you? Now, those are some of the guys we have sitting in the wing, so we could use help. You know, um, the signing yesterday with Fulton, okay, am I excited? No. Just, you know, some, just maybe some depth or something like that. I mean, unless Sale and Flaherty can really work work their magic, if they can, God bless them. I hope they can. That would be fantastic. We got all the answers for the offensive line on, on the roster right now. I'm all for it, but... I kind of doubt it. 
But I am very excited to have Flaherty back and to see what Rob Sale can do. Very, very excited. Well, as always, people, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there, and go Giants! Woo!